Okay, so here we are on Reasoning with Angles and Triangles, Lesson 1. So some of this should be a review, some of it might be new. You will need a protractor for this lesson. So the protractor is, oops, put this away. And the protractor is this doodad right here. You will need that for this, uh, for this unit, and a ruler will be good too. Okay, so it says draw an appropriate... Uh, types of angles. So there's different types of angles. Uh, acute angle are less than 90. So what that's what that means. Zero, the X is between 0 and 90 degrees. So less than 90 is acute. A right angle is a 90 degree angle. And we have an obtuse angle, which is between 90 and 180. Then we have our straight angle. So any straight angle is 180 degrees. The reflex that this part here is between 180 and 360, and then a complete rotation is 360 degrees. Now it's important to know all these terms, so again, more definitions. So these should, if you don't know them, they should go in your study sheet. You need to know them, all these terms, their background knowledge. So knowing that a straight angle is 180 degrees, then that means if we have a straight line, and there's an, a line in between that, like this guy here, we know x plus y are going to add to 180 degrees. So no matter what the x is, we know y is going to be um, 180 minus x. So if we can check that, if you grab a, your protractor, so I have mine here. Oops, smaller. So remember how to use a protractor. When we want to find angle x, I'm going to line up the line x is on. And I want the center of my protractor to be where x is. Let's do y first, because I just came up with here. So it's the same part. So, oh, putting my marker down, sorry. So here, if we move this up, you can see y is 40 degrees. 40 degrees from 0. So y is 40. And then x, if we start from this direction here at 0, we move all the way around. And x is actually 140. And together they add to 180. So let's try this guy here. See if I can rotate this. There we go. So we want our the center to be where our line starts. And we want this line, both lines to line up at the same point. There we go. Okay, so B... If I start with B, B is 60, B is 60 degrees, so this one right here is 60. A, starting from this side, oops, starting from that side would be 120. So starting 0 is right here, go around, and it's 120 degrees for A. And again, notice they add to 180. Okay, in this example, we have three. So we want our lines to line up again. Put that in the center. We'll start with P. Uh, let's start with this end. So we'll start with R. So I get R as, as long as it's in the center, it's not quite, just a little bit to the right. Get one right here, 155 degrees-ish. Do you get the same, about 55 degrees? So 55 degrees is R. Now, in order to get Q, we need to rotate this guy so that the line of Q, one of the lines of Q is lining up with our projector and the center, there you go. So here, if we start from zero and all the way to P is 90 degrees. 90 degrees, I think a little lower, oops. So 90 degrees, right there. Moving our protractor, so that was P is, or was that Q? That was Q was 90 degrees. And P now we can measure, so we have to rotate this guy again. Line it up here so that the solid line. Measure it, and we get if it's lined up properly, it should be 35 degrees. So starting from zero, moving up to here, it's about 35 degrees. And when we add those all together, 
90 plus 35 is 125 plus 55 is 180. So all straight lines add up to 180. Okay, moving on. Um, what do we call those? So when we have two angles that add to 180, that's called supplementary. So know that term, two angles that add to 180 are supplementary. Um, if they add to, three, to 90, that's complementary, but supplementary is adding to 180. So another very important term, lots of terms that you need to put on your, you need to know, and you can put them on your study sheet. Okay, so using that property, we can use that to find A. So if we know it adds to 180, then to get our A, we take 180 minus the other angle, and that gives us 25 degrees, so there's A. So same process for finding if we have two given angles, so we know they all, all three of these add to 180, we take 180, take away the 51 and the 68, and that's going to give us our B, our angle B. When we subtract that, we get 61. Okay, last example. So we have two sets of straight lines. So I can see, okay, here's one set of straight lines. So we can start by finding angle D by going 180 minus the 80 degrees. So D is 100 degrees. Now that we know D, I can find E because we have another straight line. And so this is going to add to 180. So angle E is 180 minus the 100 or 80 degrees. And then same property again, we have another straight line. We could either use this one here or you could have used this one here. So either way, you're doing 180 minus the 80 degrees. I'm going to just rewrite this one. So E was 80 degrees. Okay, so at a C, I believe that is, is one is 180 minus 80 degrees or 100 degrees as well. Which leads to our next property. So uh, when we have we have opposite angles is our next property that you need to know. And op opposite angles are 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 going to be opposite of each other, and it's created by when two lines cross. So P and Q are going to be the same thing, and R and S. And R and S we would call opposite angles. So lots of terminology you need to know in this unit. Um, the very center is called the vertex. So use a protractor. We're going to measure all three of these. So grabbing your protractor. Right. Mine must be up high. There it is. Bring it down. Okay, so starting with, uh, I'm just going to make this a little smaller, easier to use. We're going to line it up with one of our, our lines, put it on the center. I'll start by doing angle A. So A is lining on the 110. So zero is over here, all the way to 110. Okay, then rotate it. Oops, I want it smaller. I'm going to rotate it to angle C. The straight lines adds up. And make sure it's on the center. Gives you 70 degrees. 70, then we want D. So again, on the line. Also giving me 70 degrees. And rotating it one more time to get B. Gives you 110. Okay, so let's fill those in. So B was also, I measured 110, and then C was 70, and D was 70. Okay? So as you can see, um, not only do our straight lines add to 180, but opposite angles are equal. So opposite angles at a vertex are equal. I'm going to skip the next one. Moving on. Um, we can also call opposite angles at a vertex. We're call, they're also called vertically opposite angles. So that's just another name for opposite angles. It could be vertically opposite. So they're really the same thing. Okay, so what about oh, angles around a point? So we know that a, a full circle is 360 degrees. So let's double check this. So grabbing a protractor again. Make mine a little smaller. Okay, so we want to line up. I'm going to start by... Finding F, so lining up that line, 
And you can see right here, right, right there, is where f is coming out. Um, from 0 all the way to there is 110. Rotating g. So g, I'm going to line up this angle. My 0 is down here. I'm going to go all the way around. And it's now going to be 140 for g. Like that. Oops. 140. And angle e. Take this guy, put him on the center. Just going to rotate him. So our line, one of the solid lines, is on our zero line. And again, it's 110. So if we add these all together, 110 plus 110 plus 140 is 360 degrees. So it doesn't matter if there's four angles or three angles, it's going to add to 360. So I'm going to skip that second one. So based on our conject what conjecture can we make, angles around a point add to 360 degrees. So another very important theorem should go on your study sheet and you should know. So for example, calculate the, uh, the marked letters. We know these all add to 360. And we know we could take our total and subtract all the other angles. And what we're left over with is our angle. So, or you can add them together and then subtract from 360. Either way, that'll still give us, give us 100 degrees for A. OK, same idea here. We're looking for C and B. Ah, oh, problem. We need to find two angles. So here, we're going to have to use the straight line property. We know the straight line adds to 180. And so angle B, we can start by getting. Well, you could have also used it. It's vertically opposite, right? The, two, the x. So B is 60 degrees. Or you could have taken 180 and minus the 120. And that would also give you 60 degrees. So now that we know B is 60, we can get C by taking 360, which is a full circle, and subtracting all the other angles. 120, 60, 60, and 55. And what is left over is 65 degrees. OK. Um, we're not going to investigate this part right now, but we're going to just, just because it's a video recording. And so if we take a triangle, numbers 1, 2, 3, cut it up, we can actually put them into straight line. To That's how we prove that an angles in a triangle add to 180. That's one way to prove it. And and so angles, and we, did, we covered that before in trig last year, but that's something you should remember, that angles in a triangle add to 180. So using that property, recall that an isosceles triangle, there are two equal sides and two equal angles. Verify this property by measuring the sides and angles of the triangle. OK, now my ruler is probably not very accurate, but you're going to need a ruler. Put this down here. OK, and so what you should be doing is measuring the side lengths and so grab your ruler. Just make mine more proportionate to what yours is. Just give me a second. There we go. So it should have looked like something like that on yours. Maybe a little bit bigger. Because you should measure 2.4 centimeters on the bottom. Okay. 2.4 centimeters. Now take your ruler. I'm going to turn it. Uh-oh. Sorry. Okay. We're going to rotate it. There we go. And measure the side length. Okay. So you should measure 2.8 centimeters. And rotate again. Other direction and measure again and again it should be 2.8 centimeters okay and now you also need to measure the angles so grab your protractor so measuring we'll start here 
So it looks like it's halfway at 65 degrees. And we measure the other side, starting from zero over here on the left side now. And again, it looks like 65 degrees. So 65 degrees and 65 degrees. And the third angle, rotate this. There we go. You're going to line it up, the solid line with your zero. And we get a 30, 50 degree angle. We get a 50 degree angle. Okay. And so that's an isosceles triangle. Notice how we had two side lengths the same and two angles the same. So in an isosceles triangle, there are two equal sides and two equal angles. It's another theorem that you need to know. Two equal sides and two equal angles. Get that out of the way. Exterior angles of a triangle. You'll notice you're going to get a lot of theorems that you need to know, you know in this unit, and you'll have to do proofs with it as well as just solve triangles. In the diagram shown on the right, angle X is exterior. Both angle A and B are in what we call interior opposite. Okay, so there's some definition. So X is called exterior, and A and B are interior opposite. And A and B are both called interior opposites. And they're interior opposites, one, because they're on the interior of the triangle, and they're also opposite of the X. So they're not beside the X, they're opposite. So interior opposite angles. And they have a special proper property. So we're going to take a look at that. So what we want to do is grab your triangle here and your protractor. Or I guess you can't really draw, grab the triangle we grab the protractor, and we're going to measure the angles on the tri triangle. We'll start by measuring the exterior angle, so lining up our zero with that bold line. And you can see it goes all the way from zero to, I think mine's lined up perfectly. It should be 130 degrees, okay, 130 degrees. So that goes all the way to 130 degrees. So our exterior angle is a 130 here, and what we want to do is rotate this guy. I'm going to make them a little smaller too. Rotate them and measure our interior opposites. So the first one, we want to line it up with the zero. So I'm going to move this one down a bit. Should be a little bit better. So that we get here, it's going from zero to 60 is this angle. So one of them is 60 degrees. Now we'll measure the other guy. So rotate them. Over here, we want to measure this guy. So our zero is over here, and if we go all the way around, we're going to get to 70. It should be 70. Just not lined up perfectly. Okay, so 70 degrees. So the other one's 70. So we have 130, 60, and 70. And so what's the relationship between 60 and 70 and 130? So if you don't see it yet, let's try one more. So again, grab your protractor. Mine I just made super small. Okay, there you go. So our exterior angle, we're going to start with, and that's the one outside the triangle. It always is, basically one of the lines is extended still straight. And so our exterior angle here is going to be, so if we start from zero over here, oh, I moved it. Should be, let me make this bigger so you can see it better. There we go. So you should see that it's lining up, that bold line is on right there. So from zero here to here is actually 70 degrees is our exterior angle. And let's measure the two interior opposites. So we don't want the one that's attached to it. So rotating. So this is one of them. Oh, moving it. So the center's there. Take it down a bit. And okay, so here's our angle. Oh, I moved it again. So our angle is all the way from zero here, it's not perfectly lined up, to here, which is 50 degrees. So one is 50, and the other one, we're going to rotate this guy, go down to this corner. 
mine up flat. And how about it? It's not. Oh. Okay, there you go. I'm still not seeming to rotate this a bit because my angle's weird on this guy. Wrong part. Oh, there you go. It's supposed to be straight. They're supposed to be 20 degrees. Part of it is me not lining things up right. This triangle's drawn weird. Okay, maybe I didn't let measure the last one right, because right now this is kind of showing more like it is not that. And the zero is not lining up perfectly, because I'm getting more closer to 23 or 24. Maybe 24. So let's check my last measurement. 24 degrees. So I'm going to go back to that top, interior opposite, rotate it. Measure one more time because I don't think I measured right. So this does not measure lined up well enough. Yeah, because notice here now it's not centered perfectly just yet kind of a poorly drawn triangle because we should get more closer to like 46 is what it is oops it's a really bad drawn triangle so 46 and so it should add to 70 which that does um, let's try one more. So if we go over here, this triangle should be better. Okay, so I can get an exterior angle of zeros on the top, and it goes all the way around to 130. Now let's measure the two interior angles. The interior angles are the ones that are not touching, not beside it. So rotating your guy here, rotate it lines up perfectly. Okay, so I'm getting for one of the angles to be 110, and the other one to be 30. So 110 and 30. I'll just double check my measurements. 110 or 100? Oh, it's 100. 130. There we go. So 130 gives you 130, which was our exterior angle. So 130 degrees. So what can we deduce here? Our exterior angle is, so this is an important theorem that you need to know. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles. Interior opposite angles. That's like interior opposite angles theorem. So that is very important. Another theorem that you need to know. So lots of theorems to know here. And they're going to come in handy when we do proofs and when we solve problems like this. Let's look at an example. So here we have a triangle, and we know all triangles add to 180. So get angle X, 180, minus 83, minus 65. We subtract in our calculators. That's going to give us 32 degrees. Okay. This boat over here, it's like we have two triangles. Okay. So remember that this is a 90. So this is a straight line. We also have another 90 degrees here. Okay, so that should help us get angle C and angle, I think that's a D, C and D. So let's start with angle C. So C is going to be 180, subtract 90, and 29, because all angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. And so that's going to give us 61 degrees for C. So now we have C, we can use the same process for D, which is this guy right over here. 
So D is 180 minus 90 minus 36. And so that's going to give us 54 degrees. So now we have C and D. So C is 61 and D was 54. It's good to write those in. Now we have an exterior angle. A is, exter is exterior to that, that triangle right here. And there's that one arm extent. So A is equal to 61 plus 90, the interior opposite. So A is equal to 61 plus 90. You could also do that it's a straight line. So 180 minus 29 would also give you the same answer as 61 plus 90, which is 151. A. And B is the same idea. You could use a straight line. So we have a straight line here. 36 plus B is add to 180. Or we know B is equal to the sum of the interior opposite. So 90 plus 54, which gives us the same thing. It's 144 degrees. There you go. These are the fun ones. When you just get to solve the triangles instead of doing a proof. How about this guy? Let's solve this guy. So all the unknowns we need to know. We need to find out. Be careful. Um, STR and 71 are not, not opposite angles because it's not a perfect X. One of them gets bent. So we can't use that opposite angles pro property. Where would you like to start? I would probably start with Q and P because we have straight, straight lines, right? And a straight line adds to 180. So P is 180 minus 128 degrees, and Q is 180 minus 111. Okay, so 180 minus 111 is going to give us 69 degrees for Q. Let's write that in, 69. And then we can do the same process for P. We have a straight line here, adds to 180. So when we subtract 128, we're going to get uh, 52 degrees. 52 degrees. Okay. Now the next logical place that I would go, I mean there's might be a couple ways you could take this, but it was we have a triangle and a triangle adds to 180. So we can get angle R since it's inside the triangle by subtracting Q and P, the 69 and the 52. Because a full triangle adds to 180. So what does that give us? 59 degrees? 59 degrees? Okay, so we know that we know an angle there. Now, we do have another straight line, right? S is making a straight line with that 59. So we can go 180 minus the 59 to get our other angle. Oops. So what does that give us? That gives us 21 degrees. 21 degrees for S. And last is T. Well, we know a full circle adds to 360, so we can take away the 21, the 59, and the 71 to figure out what's left over and what is left over. So subtracting those in your calculators gives you 109 degrees. Now we're done with that question. Okay, next question. Now when you see things like this, these ticks, they're gonna they mean something. They're there for a reason. You have to use them. So what kind of triangle do we have when two sides are the same? That's an isosceles. And remember when the two sides are the same, two opposite angles are also the same. So that means D equals 34 degrees, because it's an isosceles triangle. So that's there for a reason. Now we can find E, because a triangle adds to 180. So 180 minus the 234s, or minus 68, is going to give us 112 degrees. And last, we know that, that 112 and F make a straight line. So 180 minus the 112, which gives us 68 degrees, is F. And now we're done. Okay, so in summary, the, the rules that you need to know from this, remember from this lesson, 
angles on a straight line add to 180. Angles on a straight line add to 180. And later on, we're going to prove these using deductive reasoning, using formulas. Opposite angles at a vertex are equal. So that's saying, remember, these guys are opposite right here. So this is equal to that. So x and x. And then these two angles, say y, are equal to each other. Angles around a point, so a full circle adds to 360. Most of you are pretty good at that. And triangles add to 180. We did that in grade 10. And this one is a little bit new. The exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the two interior opposites. So let's draw that out. So you have a triangle. Extend one of the sides. So it's still straight. Maybe I should do that a little better. So one, two, extend that line. So the exterior angle here, we'll call that x is equal to the interior, the sum of the two interior. So x is equal to a plus b here. So those are the theorems you need to remember for um, tomorrow and in your homework. And that's this lesson.